What is up, everyone, and welcome to the What You Got podcast, where we talk topics A to Z and everything in between. Today, we're discussing a little bit of a revenge film, and that is The Harder They Fall, Netflix's newest Western movie. It's been a minute since I've watched a Western there, bud, and I'm quite excited to discuss this one because it had a colorful cast of characters and a rather uh, interesting plot. Obviously, you have the classic tropes, but some newer elements as well. I'm curious to see where you went with this. Uh, You can start it in a number of different places. Mm -hmm. So with that, bud, what you got? Well, Palmer, uh, this movie, yeah, I can't remember the last time I watched a Western, honestly. And um, it was uh, this movie was it was entertaining. Um, I definitely felt like it dragged a little bit, though, I I will say. I felt like it was a little too long. Um, And we can definitely go more into the plot details uh, a little later. But um, because I definitely have some nitpicky comments about the plot. (laughs) But I um, no, I I thought it was like overall just like a fun movie. I did. You know, I have, like, my criticisms. I did feel like sometimes it was a little cliche, a little cheesy at times. But, you know, overall, I thought the acting and the performances, like, was superb. Nobody really faulted in in any way. I thought everybody did a pretty good job. Um, it definitely had its – I definitely, like like you said, colorful cast of characters. I thought they were all really interesting. I especially like Lakeith Stanfield's character. His was just fantastic in every way. Like, um just always did exactly what I was expecting him to do. Uh, so, and he was just a sly person, just a sly little devil. But, um, anyways, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think everybody was great. Uh, it was a fun movie. Definitely has some issues, though, and we could definitely go into that a little bit more. But I'm curious, what are your thoughts? <laughs> oh man well i think i concur i definitely picked up on some things that we can talk about a little bit later but when you take a step back and just look at it for just being a fun western mm-hmm. where people are gonna get shot up oh, it's and a good time make some it's jokes a, it's yeah a, it's a movie you'll have a good time watching it for sure absolutely and so when it's funny you mentioned the, the duration of it yeah. because when i i was watching with my dad this past weekend and when i turned on, i was like wow two hours and 15 minutes that's a it's kind of a commitment let's see what we can do here so i wasn't sure how they would build it all up and the plot was you know the end would be the revenge and before we get into that let me begin by saying spoiler alert people this is a rather new film so if you were planning on watching it and you don't want any spoilers please hop off let's do an older episode we got a bunch of them now uh and then uh come back when you've seen it but continuing um but no so it, i wasn't sure where they were gonna build it all up to and if it was gonna follow kind of a traditional style or if it would be a little bit different maybe a little more artistic and ultimately, I think I got more or less what I was expecting out of it. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. So you talk about a lot. I'm just curious. So, I mean, it's a revenge flick. Yes. Naturally, a, you probably have flick. some some crazy killer opening scene or something that instigates all of the action. Yeah. So with that, bud, what did you think of the very first? first scene with young nat love um i thought it was a good way to kind of like set the tone for the movie um that uh the villain who we don't know like who it is yet and i always can and i thought it was totally gonna like i already knew that um the actor was in the movie so like but like it was clear that the they were really building up to be like surprise he's in the movie um but i um I uh, yeah, I just thought I thought it was a good scene. I thought you know I like knew it was gonna be a reve- I didn't actually know it was gonna be a revenge movie. I didn't really know what, what the plot was going in. I just knew it was a western, and then it had a couple of actors like uh, Regina King, in it, uh, like Keith Stanfield as well, um, and going like so the opening sequence. So I was just like, okay, so that they're setting the tone for the movie, and this guy's a total you know jerk and a half. Uh, kills this kid's parents sorry spoilers but it's the first two minutes of the movie and then like you know basically brands him on his forehead with a scar so uh yeah i mean pretty gruesome kind of opening in a sense like the cat the kid's like 10 years old and it's just like damn like that guy is ruthless uh, yes uh, whoever did that um and like uh I definitely wanted to know more about like why he did it. And I have to say when the payoff, when you finally learned, I was a little disappointed on the whole thing. So um, we can get to that a little bit later, but I'm curious kind of what your thoughts were on this opening sequence. 
Oh man, kind of like yourself. I mean, establish the stakes right off of the bat. I was super curious. So once again, they didn't reveal who the the villain was, mm-hmm. but you know, from the, the trailers, you kind of knew. Yeah. But um, so I, you didn't know what the relationship was. Clearly, there had been a pre-established relationship with the father and this individual, and so ultimately, guy kills the mother. Guy kills the father. I wasn't sure if he was going to kill the kid. I wasn't sure if it yeah. was, like, I knew the like, revenge. And I wasn't sure if it was somebody who was outside of the house or if it was one of them. But, um, so he lets the kid live. But as you said, he kind of, like, brands him. And I was so surprised by the fact that, not surprised, it was interesting that the cross, like, a cross was the uh, symbol he put on his head. I was like, I don't know if that was supposed to be something more, like, symbolic or artistic. Wasn't or if that was really just like, like a pastor. Oh, you're right. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah he was, like, a... Mm, mm-hmm. interesting interesting yeah. yeah no so i thought that was fast but i mean it just i kind of loved the the ruthlessness of, i mean sometimes you just have to have a villain mm-hmm. who does not mind <laughs> killing anybody yeah. and clearly from the jump that was established mm-hmm. so i was i was ready for it yeah I'm buckled in oh nice. man i i was actually kind of curious though when um the the hand was revealed on the guy with the shoulder and it was a, of a scorpion so mm-hmm. same scene and you don't know you see this guy's face and you know it's a bad guy yeah. and then fast forward to years later um and i guess there's just this same individual the guy with the scorpion on mm-hmm. the hand walks into a, a church and you see did you know from the jump that the man who was praying was the protagonist oh yeah i knew that was gonna be the case and I did kind of find it funny though that they kind of just like they show the opening scene of where the you know his character kind of sees his mom and dad get you know brutally murdered in front of him. He gets you know basically branded on his forehead with a cross, and um, and then the, the next scene he's already enacting revenge on the first guy. And I was like, really? <laughs> like we couldn't have done like a montage of him like his life as he grew up without parents or kind of seeing that like motivation stir in, but it was just like right into the get go. We are just killing off the, one of the first guys we saw literally two seconds ago. And I, and then that was like where I was like, okay, really like a little disappointed on that sense, especially since we could talk about the length of the film and just like the story pacing overall. Uh, I Dude, think that was to, my number two question. Yeah. That was my number two question pacing. Yeah. Like the, there was a lot of, I think, almost like filler i felt like in in the in the plot like uh but we, you know we can get to it as we talk through the movie a little bit but like what were your initial thoughts as like kind of we you know we fast forward to like 20 years later we see mm-hmm. Nat love just you know in the church mr guy with the scorpion hand comes <laughs> and and uh basically he just, you blows know, him blows away. him away and had that little bit of a tarantino flair to it i, I thought dude i kept getting tarantino like mm. hits when i was watching this i mean just the fact that a it's a western mm. well, i know that's not classic but, yeah you know he's done it more of late and then b it's revenge flick so that's very much in tarantino and then c when he just started lighting him up i mean mm. the amount of blood yeah, and yeah. everything some of the camera angles i was like oh this there's is- a lot of like big like beat downs with like blood just splashing everywhere and i'm like it's definitely yep. like going over the top which is like tarantino style <laughs> but like not like it's drawing from like tarantino influence but i wouldn't say it's like trying to copy a tarantino film no absolutely and then it's also they had some just in terms of the dialogue those like little one-off quips where yeah. it was had nothing to do with anything uh-huh. but somebody's talking about something random and it gets worked into the conversation while they're killing somebody or doing something yeah. else so very much uh in terms of the tarantino but kind of to your point as well so it took me a second i, th- I thought it was the main character in that love i wasn't positive but then i mean you see that obviously he's trained himself and he blows the guy away he's pretty good with a gun yeah. and throughout the movie they make mention of the kind of individual he is but they never really talk about his progression and that is something i would have liked to, to hear a little bit more yeah. about because he went from literally, I guess, a pastor's child mm. to a killer of men who, like, robs robbers. So it's kind of a jump. What happened uh, in between there? But I know no, that was just uh, – I know. I fir- I, at first, I actually thought he was a bounty hunter. That was my mm. original thought, especially since it cuts. Like, the next scene after he kills the guy, it's like 
two other people, like two other guys, I guess who are part of his crew, are like gunning down like the the I forget what their gang is called, like the Crimson the Crimson Hood. And yes. um and I'm like, oh they're bounty hunters. You know, they're like these people are clearly like in like hooded masks. They just, you know, robbed a bank and they're just gunning them down. But like what it really is is just a revenge thing. So it's not necessarily that he's a bounty hunter. He's just like kind of an outlaw. And that wasn't like clear, especially since he goes on later in the movie to say that I don't want to rob a bank. I don't rob banks. So I was like, is he's, he's not, is he an outlaw or is he just somebody who's a bounty hunter going out and like seeking revenge? Like what is his life story? We don't see him be an outlaw, especially since. And this, I'm going to talk about the ending scene here a little bit. Talk about it, bro. <laughs> Idris Elba said his main motivation was to turn him into an outlaw. But we never yes. see that side of him other than him literally just killing Idris Elba's uh, gang. Yep. Yep. Or robbing that bank one, one time. One time because, because of, which I have criticisms for that entire plot. Bro. But like, <laughs> bro. That was one of my, like... That was my equivalent of Spectre when freaking Remy Malik lets the little girl go. That was that for me. In this film. <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, or sorry, that's back, dude. Uh, no, no time, time to, to die. die. Yeah. Goodness gracious! Yeah, dude. Ah. Uh, uh, oh wait, because <laughs> I can tell this is, this podcast episode will swell at that point in time. It will definitely swell. Oh my gosh! I was just like, yeah, I would have liked a little bit more uh, backstory. I think they could have changed a little bit of like the middle to the end like cut a lot of that out and kind of do a little bit more backstory to nat love his rise in his gang maybe like see him kind of become an outlaw like maybe he's forced into it because of his uh orphaned childhood and he had to do a lot of terrible things but and we don't really see that we don't really know his story and it would have been cool to explore that because his character himself is pretty good and it's just, you know, unfortunate that, like, that's held back. And this character, well, like, a good, it's a little, like, one or two dimensional. And then it, it, does, it doesn't get that fleshed out because of this lack of a backstory that we don't really get to see. Definitely. Mm-hmm. And while we're on the topic of all of this and pacing, I guess the scene following that mm-hmm. was the um, break into the train and the yeah. release of Idris Elba from his imprisonment charlie yes yeah. what did we uh what do we think what do we think um i actually like that scene it was a, it was a good scene i think it really like establishes like s- kind of like his main crew i guess which is uh regina king and like keith stanfield's characters i mean like they're really good characters that you know I think they're definitely like standout characters especially um like keith stanfield like i just it's like i'm not a violent man i don't like violence <laughs> he's just a he's just a subterfuge in the make like you know um and it's great and like but like trudy or uh regina king is just all about violence just like gunning people down and it's great these characters are complete like well not really complete opposites i think like keith stanfield is just more of like i'm not the confrontational type i'm the deceptive right like yep. wave the red flag and then stab you in the back kind of type but um uh, that's great. His character was so well written. He did a he did a great job. I, I can only sing praises to it. And this scene really highlights that. Um, but like at fr- when they were like, oh, you know, we have a pardon. And my first thought was just like, then why did you hijack the train? And then they're like, in exchange for killing every one of you on board. I'm like, oh, so they at least okay. <laughs> but see, I, I so I appreciated that nuance to it. But at the same time, it almost felt like. That was like almost unnecessary as a as It a was a little me. unnecessary to me as well. Like, they could have gone about this in a different way. If they truly had, like, a pardon to release him in exchange for, like, killing, like, this unit. Like, first of all, is there no, like, court of law? Like, I'm confused. <laughs> They're gunning these people down for raiding and stealing a village of silver. And this guy that they have imprisoned, like is in prison for doing probably like way more murder than what this unit <laughs> army did. And like, they just get freaking executed by an outlaw gang. 
<laughs> I mean, come on. The nuance is great that they covered their tracks and the, like we had the part in and stuff, but really? Like, was this necessary? I agree with that point. All right, per- and I almost would have respected it more if they literally shot up the entire thing and killed everybody yeah. immediately and like maybe left one dude alive and been like, oh yeah, so he gets a pardon and we needed to just kill you guys. It would have made more sense, yeah. I think, kind of, but I understand they needed to use it as an opportunity to flesh out both Regina and like Keith's characters. Mm. But uh, yeah, Cherokee I feel like you could have just Keith. not had that in there because like Honestly? it's shown that this gang is ruthless multiple yep. times throughout the movie. You could have just you know, took the pardon out, showed the, had them show up on the train, and just murder them all to free the guy, like to free Andrew Zelda's character, and that would have been fine. Nobody would have had any quarrels, and I would we'd be moving on from this scene. But instead, we got to talk about this ridiculous pardon plot. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that is yes, yes. That is see, I mean it's a, I, I can appreciate what the writers are doing. They're like, yeah, let's make it let's put some layers in yeah. here. But like you said, here we are <laughs> still talking about it. We could have been this could have been done a couple minutes ago, yeah. but uh it's just like uh, just some didn't really think that one through, I think. Yeah. I, I think yeah, they probably yeah, had like yeah. a different idea for how it was going to go and they might have rewritten it, but they still wanted to keep that part of the plot in and then and it just mm-hmm. kind of stayed and it just, I, I don't think it ends up working and I, it's not like a plot hole or anything, but it's just, yeah. it's just, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> it's just not, I don't know. I wouldn't have done that. I would have done it differently, but I mean, other than that, but you, and you still could have introduced the characters that way. I just figured, like, like you could literally have the exact same scene, and it would have been excellent. It would have been excellent if you just removed the whole pardon fiasco. But uh, <laughs> it would have been excellent. You introduced Regina King and Lakeith Stanfield, and even um, Idris Elba's character, and you can just boom the ruthlessness. Yep. But maybe they wanted to show. Maybe they did the pardon thing so they can keep them all alive, and then Idris Elba can show his ruthlessness, kill everyone except the, this guy. Like, I don't know. But you show that so often from a the opening scene in the movie, and then mm-hmm. other times when he's in his town of Redwood, where the guy, like a guy, just like says like one bad thing about him, he just guns him down in the street. Like, never say <laughs> that again. <laughs> Could have been so many Dude, other was... opportunities to really show how, like how ruthless of a person he is, but I no, abs- absolutely, no, absolutely, absolutely, to all those points, and yeah, I mean, like you, you, there are plenty of examples throughout the film, and even if you wanted to do it in such a way where it was like they were, and by they I mean Nat Love and his gang were discussing them, and maybe you have snippets to something like that, but you don't have to go into the entirety of the mm-hmm. scene. You can just kind of show how each character is like. Yeah. Oh, I hear a Cherokee Bill's the fastest, and it's just him shooting people or something. Yeah. I don't know. I felt like there could have been something a little different, but it's okay. Mm-hmm. We moved on from that, and we moved on to I guess the next scene then was uh, Nat Love reconnecting with what Stagecoach Mary, yeah, who was played by coach. Zazie Beats. Zazie Beats, yeah. Mary Fields, I believe, and uh, our stagecoach, yes. Mary. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that was, you know, I had no problems with this scene, you know, like he, it kind of like expands upon, I guess, like his, a little bit of his past life. It develops his character a little bit more. We kind of get to see kind of the, his old love interest. Um, and I guess the life he could have had, but we don't really know why she hates him now. And we never really learn why. It would have been a good backstory, probably. Who knows? It could have been something that was... I don't know. But, um, yeah, I, I don't really have too much to say about this. It was kind of like moving the plot along. You know, it wasn't like... I don't think it was anything significant in the sense. But what are your thoughts here? No, you raise a good... And that's kind of what I was going to ask about um, from you did you buy the romantic relationship between the two? Just because they never really addressed what happened in the past. I mean, you could infer based on their personalities that obviously there were both strong, strong characters yeah. and they might butt heads mm-hmm. or not necessarily see eye to eye to eye. But I was confused because first she kissed him, then she slapped him. Mm-hmm. And, and then, then they kind of started getting Nia yeah. back into it again. And I was like, um okay i'm trying to i'm just trying to catch up to where we're at as a as a couple Mm -hmm. so i didn't i I needed answers there and i didn't get them and unfortunately what's interesting is that 
the majority of the movie, I feel like they weren't together. Like she was either captured or he was off doing something else. I know. So you Their never got a chance never really to see like that. Blossomed, and then I think he randomly proposes, and then she's like, "No." Yep. <laughs> and that was kind of the end of that whole relationship. And so, like, again, it's just like, why was this? I mean, I can understand. Like, I'm fine with the keeping it in there if you want to, like, kind of use it as like, a development for the characters. But it's not really developed upon or it's really not really brought up again because, like you said, they're not really in the movie together that often. So it could have been, I don't know, workshopped a little bit more to maybe have these characters develop some kind of uh, arc with them throughout the movie as they go through like this whole revenge plot but no but i well, the one thing i did really enjoy about that kind of sequence was my girl cuffy coming through he introduced yeah. her she's like the bouncer to the mm. little i guess saloon or whatever it is and she's a little like a little thing but she holds it down she deters any yeah. ne'er-do-wells and does it with style so yeah i, I really like i enjoyed that character i liked a her lot. little opening sequence like name's cuffy they call me cuffy or whatever um <laughs> yep. it, it was good after she just like brings out her fist to cuffs and just flattens two people trying to enter the bar with their weapons it was great oh my gosh she's gonna take them to jail like, mm-hmm. give them their weapons when they're on their way mm-hmm. out of town i said yeah. yes get you a cuffy mm-hmm. i think get this scene really cuffy. just kind of wanted to introduce like his former lover like mary fields and cuffy who would be central to the plot and also kind of just puts a buck or yeah buck right um not buck love love okay yeah yeah. uh buck is i just love love into this what's that town called again i don't remember but um into the situation so we can move the plot forward so we can get meet with marshall reeves and uh you know team up with him to take down buck i guess yes there were a lot of names a lot of names a lot of names and i was Actually, kind of, I was. Th- I wanted to know what you thought. So sometimes a revenge flick is done more in, in terms of solo. Mm-hmm. How did you feel about this involving uh, Mary and Nat, and then I guess Jim, the young guy, and Pickett, who's the slightly older guy, and then Cuffy, and then um, Reeves as well? What'd you think of a team kind of uh, um, mission? I liked it. I mean, it because I, from what I understand, it was like Love was putting together his old gang but he also didn't know who cuffy was so i guess she was kind of like a new addition to the gang but i think everybody else was people he'd worked with before um so it was just like yeah you gotta help me take down uh you know bringing the old crew back together to you know take down the man i've been hunting for all my life but we don't really know what this crew or his gang has done in the past because like we've already mentioned that they don't expand upon the deeds of his outlaw at life if he wasn't even an outlaw even though it's like heavily implied that he might not actually be an outlaw um because i don't know it just doesn't seem to make sense i don't know i think once again it reinforced just watch this and have fun yeah just watch, just this watch and, and have, have fun. fun like it's it's got it's got a great shootout scenes Yep. Um, like especially the last like thirty minutes of the movie, and it's a fun time. It's a fun movie with a lot of quirky dialogue. Definitely has its like Western cliches in there, but like you know maybe they put did that on purpose to make the movie just fun. Um, but the plot is just like, <laughs> uh, you know, if you really like look at it, it's just. <laughs> why did you laugh? Yeah. <laughs> but why did you laugh? <laughs> um, I mean, because, like, the funny thing is, like, he meets with Reeves, U.S. Marshal Base Reeves, who arrests him under, like, just to give him a chance for revenge. Because he somehow knows that love is after revenge. um, And doesn't arrest him for being, you know, an outlaw. Mm. And, like, doesn't arrest... And, like, he is already says, I don't rob banks. I don't do this, that, whatever, but... Also, make- why did he need to arrest him? Why couldn't he just said, hey, just meet me outside of town so we can go get this guy? Yeah, I don't know why either. I think there's a point in the movie where Love says that, no, like, I didn't want you to get too involved. But, like, he didn't – Was he, he wasn't in on it. Like, 
base Reeves or the Marshall Reeves just arrests him to just like take him away. Like no way love was in on like am I missing the part where he's in on it? Was that scene supposed to imply that he was in on it? Because I did not seem that way. Like I was just really confused by that. I'm not gonna lie to you. I watched this film. Okay, so I was not to say I was multitasking. I was multitasking a little bit. Mm-hmm. I was doing like some things with cards while watching. Yeah, but I was paying close attention, mm-hmm. and there were probably three points in the film when I looked up and I said, "Wait a second, how did we get here <laughs> from like the previous two minutes?" Like, ago? Just, like what happened? Yeah, and so that was de- that was definitely that was definitely one of them. Mm-hmm. I was oh, also man. really confused because I did I too around the same time in the movie. Kind of just like looked down or was like, you know, check something on my phone. And I looked up. I'm like, I was paying attention, but <laughs> hold on. What's happening? <laughs> I don't really like, who, who's in there? <laughs> yep. Um, I'll tell you when the other moment like that occurred. I'll, I'll actually, I'll, yeah, I'll tell you right now. Mm-hmm. Essentially, um, so after the sequence, when they get the team together, we're going to go take down Buck. They have stagecoach Mary go in. Oh, that this and, part did uh, not make sense to me. I not a lick, not a lick of this. sense. Why would you do that? Mm-hmm. Because, first of all, it's been established that, or at least I think it's been established, that Fields used to run with Love's gang. Buck knows that Love's gang took down his, like, his bank robbery heist team, and then she just goes in there to scout to buy a saloon. Like, how... Or why would she think that's a good idea? Especially if they're like, we know who you are. Like, what? Why would you? like? She gave a line, and I know she said something to the effect of, they won't do anything to me because they know who I am, or they won't think I'm with you. But I I, I needed to pray on that one. I needed to pray on that one. Oh, man. I don't. Yep. I just See, I missed it. that. I, just I missed that, that point. point. Yeah. I missed that point. I missed that point. I don't know I, if there was a point other than to drive home the fact that they have a hostage. We need to go negotiate, and then we have to go rob a bank. Bro, bro. Okay. My see the thing. My my third time was in before that scene. So when they they take her as a hostage, she gets kind of choked out, but they let her go. The whole squad, who she was trying to keep out of the town, now go up into the town. Would have been better to have maybe two or three and have a couple hide, but they had everybody out there in the open. And so, some things go down, and essentially then, Nat Love has to go to meet Buck. But he's walking inside to go see Mary, and then I guess talk to Buck. And next scene, he's strung up with his arms, getting punched Oh, I didn't stomach. get that. I was like, bro. I was so confused on bro. how that <laughs> happened. I'm yep. Like, wait, did I miss something? Was this scene cut? Or like, <laughs> I was like, was like that's a, we went from walking, all of a sudden getting punched in the yeah, stomach. Like, when happening? did you get captured? When <laughs> when did this happen? And why and like, was he let go? Like, <laughs> bro, logistically, if you want me to rob a bank, why would you hurt me before you made me do that? I don't understand. I don't understand. I also don't understand, like. Is this the part where Idris Elba realized, like, this is how I make him per- turn into an you know, outlaw? As I make him rob a <laughs> bank for me, but we just don't I... know if he was an outlaw to begin with. But it's implied that he always was, and that robbing a bank was just, you know, with the cherry on top. Like, I don't know why him robbing a bank was such a big deal, which just leads me to believe that he wasn't actually an outlaw. And that this was the part, the part where Idris Elba turns him into an outlaw to enact revenge on on their father. Spoilers, if you haven't been paying attention so far, uh, their father, because it turns out that they're half brothers. And because why not? It's just, <laughs> and it's just like. Um, I'm confused. Like the whole point is that you hit the father, who is dead, by the way, and therefore could never know what happens to his son. He gets to turn into an outlaw to spite his father for trying to not become an outlaw after being an outlaw. 
the word outlaw was used like 30 times yeah and if you're listening and you just didn't care and you haven't seen this movie it sounds as dumb as as i just (laughs) described it like oh my dude i was hoping more than anything that they weren't related i was like please god don't let these people be brothers i had a feeling they were the, I like, did too from the jump. Yeah. I was like, I would have appreciated it more if they had tied it in some other way because we know like everybody's like, oh, that's my brother, or, that's my cousin, or, that's my father, yeah. that's my. I'm like, no, let's just make. Why can't it be something deeper than that? Yeah, why but, couldn't it have been deeper? Like, why couldn't it have been something like personal? Like maybe Love's father did something awful to Buck and his family or something like that, yep. which is why he decided to come in and kill his wife. Like maybe Love's father killed. Uh, buck's wife or something i don't know like it could have been something a little bit more personal a little bit more deep but it was just i guess in a sense is that like his their father killed his ex-wife and buck was mad about that but like i why i have to make them siblings like you could have just replaced that mother figure with like you know literally like it could have still been his mother but they didn't have to be related like, I don't know. Like, yep. Just... Yep. Because then I felt bad for e- like Idris Elba. I was like, oh, dang. Like, that sucks. Like, yeah. he's had a hard life. Which, I mean, is good, I guess, from a storytelling perspective. Of, like, you empathize with the film. But at the same time, I'm like, that came at the end. So it wasn't even, like, a big, like, oh. It wasn't a big it was reveal. Kind of and like, we've uh, already established that he is just a murderous lunatic. Like, who just yep. kills whoever. Like, he literally drags the guy he left the town in charge of and beats him with a gun. Like smacks out his teeth and then guns a guy down in the street and then he blows that guy later up with dynamite. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> I forgot about that. Mm-hmm. And then he kidnaps Fields and like beats her and tortures her. It's just, yep, he's a bad guy. But I wish they developed him a little bit more. Been. I think like the fact that they revealed him to be the half brother at the, like the last five minutes of the movie was. Uh, a missed opportunity to develop his character more. Mm-hmm. Could have been and, like, I mean, so much, so much better if you know it was revealed way earlier, and then like he has to struggle with that, like do I have to kill mm-hmm. my brother kind of thing, and like it would have been really good internal, like you know, man versus self kind of thing. But yep. And I don't know if his backstory warrants the person he became. Like I get it, his dad was abusive and he killed his mother but then he goes off and just starts killing everybody like it's yeah. that was mm-hmm. it's just i don't know it's just so many things so many things that were just wrong with like the the second half of the i mean like the, the plot i'm telling you like i mean yeah <laughs> it's just, it's got its moments this movie for sure i mean they're definitely great sequences um like you know, acting is great. I think all the performances oh, he, are excellent. I don't think pulled it through. Even, that pulled it yeah, through. They pulled it through. But the the plot just has so much left to be desired. You know. Yes. Yes. I was gonna say. Oh, <laughs> we almost glossed over it, but I definitely want to talk about the the bank robbing scene. Okay. My whole problem with this is that it eventually it served no point. They didn't have to do this at all, and here's why. Because they blow up the money anyway. Why couldn't it just be fake money? Why couldn't it just be a sack of beans? Why? They don't even you let raise. they don't even let Lakeith Stanfield's character check the money, right? Like he goes over and starts to check yeah. it and they're like, No, stop, don't do that. <laughs> uh, also, what the heck happened with like the bank like employee who like started giving them the money and seemed like he was on their side? Yeah, like Did he you was just running that? out with them, and he's like putting the bag yeah. on the horse. I'm like, what was the was point like, is, of this? I said, where? Like, I, I was like, I know I did not miss this much information yeah. in this film, <laughs> dude. I was like, I, I've been paying pretty close attention. I don't think I missed anything. I mean, if you that deduce was... that like they weren't gonna hand over um, fields, like by giving them the money, then like why rob the bank in the first place, which was so against your moral code for whatever that meant in this life. Cause we don't know what life you led mm-hmm. to break that to on and off chance and then blow it all up in the anyway and get yourself in a shootout where like three of you die. Like, I don't, I don't understand. I didn't a- get addi- that. Additionally? It was just a bad sequence, but what were your thoughts on the bank sequence? 
No, I was going to say additionally, additionally, additionally. They made Cuffy. So, for those of you who haven't seen it who are listening to this, female who wears men's clothing. And um, she basically was made to wear a dress to go to the bank. But but she's only like, she only uses it to walk up to the, the I guess, the teller and ask for money. I was like, she could have done that in her normal clothes. Yeah. A. B, they had two security guards, and this man, Nat Love, just pulls out two guns and just points at I'm like, you're telling me one of those fools can't figure out how to shoot him? Like, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> like yeah. there are two of you. Uh, he only has two guns. He can't pay attention. I did not. Uh, I, know, I, don't, I, I didn't feel believable that, like, because they came out with their guns first, and he only had one gun out. And I'm like, he pulls out the second gun so much later that I don't believe <laughs> that they would have just stopped in their tracks. <laughs> Oh, dude. I mean, I was... I didn't know what to say. I was like, wow, I'm surprised he hasn't been shot. Yeah. I'm surprised, I'm surprised he hasn't, he hasn't been, been shot. shot. And then... I'm surprised they still haven't shot. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like waiting for something to happen. And then he somehow gets them to disarm themselves. Dude, I was like, this is one man. Like, what is happening? It's one I, two <laughs> or three. I, yeah, there was like a whole group of people yeah. who were just standing there watching. I was like, you tell them, come on now. One of them don't got a gun yeah. or even can't just stand up and do something. Yeah, that was interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also, he said he wasn't going to try to kill anybody. So it's like you almost had more leverage at that point. I mean, obviously, he has a gun, but you almost have more leverage to then try and do mm-hmm. something because he's likely not going to kill you. Yeah. Uh. Also, somebody got shot, not during this scene, but like an earlier scene. In both the oh sorry I forgot to say this on the train they shot the one soldier in the arm and the leg I was like this is Civil War times like he probably just lost two limbs like oh no that guy probably died like, but then he ended up driving <laughs> the train away like everything's nope. fine I just don't have two bullets <laughs> in me you know <laughs> slowly dying of blood loss yeah, but slowly all good, dying all of good. blood loss and I'm pretty sure uh, you know my organs are failing so. <laughs> So this is probably the last uh, time I get to drive this so, thing. So uh, uh, this is the ne- this is the last stop. I'm sorry, you guys couldn't make it to your destination. I'm just gonna tap out here, close my eyes, maybe not open the room again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. I just was reminded of that during the whole bank robbery sequence, and I needed to say something. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> and so, following the bank robbing sequence, all of a sudden we find ourselves back in what was it, Redwood? Yeah. Um, the town of Buck. And his associates. And let's just kick it off into the action. Because you already made mention of the fact that basically they bring this money in for them to get Mary back. And they bring Mary back out, right? Um, and, yeah, they bring because Mary out. In the, Regina like, walks out with her. Yeah, yeah. And the other person. Mm-hmm. And then they blow up the money. Yeah, but and not I'm, before once the again, first stage coach that they brought in randomly blows up and blows that guy's arm off which i and you never saw the dude again you never saw I the dude again i was like was he, that i figured arm? what happened was he opened it and there was like a tripwire explosive and boom goes the dynamite but yeah that i'm assuming that was his arm because like reeves u.s marshall reeves goes what which arm is that left or right because i forget he made he mentioned some type of uh like like, oh, I want to place his bet on like some type of joke. Work. Yeah, he said, I bet my right arm that I've killed more people than you have. Oh. I was like, oh, boy. Yeah. Because that's a normal thing to say to a person when they're you know doing a money exchange. Yep. That's just, I don't know. It was silly. And then, so that happens. And nobody's alarmed. Nobody, Everybody's fine. No. <laughs> it's, it's all good. Mary's still very much alive. Yeah, nobody's still, pulled a nobody's gun on her or anything. Gun. No, no shootout started. It, everything's fine. Everything's good. Let's let's not think that the second wagon is going to be rigged with dynamite after the first one clearly was. And then <laughs> <laughs> So then the second one comes out and then like they go to check it and she's got a gun to the dynamite. They can see that they're going to do, possibly blow it up and they're like don't do it. Don't check that money. We robbed a bank for nothing cuz we're about to blow this wagon sky high. <laughs> and then the shootout happens. Not before, I guess, uh, Lakeith Stanfield pulls a slide oh. one on um, Jim. Bill, I think. Or no. I think Wait. Jim was the younger one, and then Pickett was the older one. Who was Jim? The young guy? Isn't. Who was like, I'm the fastest draw. No, the that West guy's Bill whatever. Pickett. And then. Bill Pickett was the older guy who was like sniping people from the roof. Oh. 
really? Yeah. Oh, that was Bill Pickett. Who's Jim? I don't even see him on the, on the, on the, <laughs> on the IMDb. Uh, yeah, I'm on IMDb, and I don't. It's something. It, it, I think Jim is like his second name. It starts with a B. Is the first one. Oh. Uh. Beckworth. Yes, there you go. Is were they related? I don't. I didn't, I didn't catch that. Cherokee Bill and Beckworth. I don't think so. Yeah, but anyways, I thought it was a good scene because I was just like, my whole time, I'm like, dude, why hasn't Lakeith Stanfield just shot this guy yet? Like, it was totally in his character, and then he does. I'm like, oh, okay, good. And he at least stood, <laughs> stood to his character, so I thought that was a good little sequence. Because <laughs> the guy was no, like, dude. why do they always count so slowly? <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering. I was like, there's no way I wouldn't just shoot. He said five. Five. Four, put my bullet in. Four. <laughs> Three, check the gun. I was like, okay. Yep. And then, you know, it's time. they start shooting up everybody. And, um, My dad said maybe he's still alive. <laughs> I said, Dad, I don't, I don't he's think he's He just got shot in the face. I don't think he's alive. <laughs> I think he might not be uh, <laughs> coming back from that one. So, oh, so man. But, yeah, no, madness ensued. People were... But I'm not going to lie. They were literally standing out in the open the entire time. Uh-huh. And they were just destroying people who should have probably stayed in, like, the shelter or shops and just shot from out of there. Yep. But For some reason, I mean, I they guess. had to come out into the open. And then, like, uh, Cuffy comes out and just, like, jump up, jump, like, pops the two people next to a field. So I was like... Whoa. That was crazy. That was, pretty that was crazy. And then, like, the, she goes <laughs> oh, as, like, a melee... Or no, uh, Fields has a melee brawl with Regina King's character, Trudy. <laughs> they just go absolutely buck wild on each other. Yes. And I was like, she didn't kill her. She was, they were fighting and obviously she hit her across the face. Oh, I thought she lot of blood died came. in that moment. Oh, my friend. And we have a fun thing to discuss at the end of this particular uh, story. But yes, no. Oh, she. I thought she died. No, she was still around. How do you know she's still around? Do you think the end scene that was her? I think so. I thought that was... Oh, that was her. Oh. (laughs) Yes, yes. But we can discuss, we can discuss. I was going to say, so following that, so Catfight, ultimately Mary wins. She goes back and reunites with Nat. Mm -hmm. And then... Oh, actually, and then I guess it's Reeves who was like, yo, you go go get your, your revenge. Don't miss. And so this man walks in. Also, I'm like, we just had a whole squad of people, two of which were our, our close friends, got killed. Oh, also during that sequence, Cuffy comes through and kills Cherokee Bill. After he hanged. shoots Bill Pickett. Yeah. Yep, in the back. In the back. And classic Cherokee Bill. <laughs> That's style. that Cherokee, that Cherokee, that Cherokee Bill. Cherokee Bill. Um, <laughs> Oh man! Yeah, but what did you think of his death scene? Do you think <laughs> I thought it was um like fitting? Like you know he kind of was drawn out. And he's just like I'm so dead right now, <laughs> 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 and like and it kind of like reinforced the idea of, like why he doesn't do fair fights because like he kind of does a fair fight with Cuffy and she absolutely smokes him, shoots yep. him right through the neck, and then like he's just <laughs> bleeding out and dying. And walks out onto the street and just. <laughs> collapses i thought it was good, uh, i love uh, when she said uh before when they were talking about who's like how would she do against cherokee bill mm-hmm. and they were talking about the fastest gun in the west yeah. and she's like i see i see her every day i like look in the mirror and they're laughing at her but she proved it she, she proved, proved it. it she did prove it um so yeah big gunfight goes on a lot of explosions inside the house that idris <laughs> elba's in which i also find funny is that there's like a scene where like a bunch of people come in on horseback or whatever in hoods, which I assume are just more Crimson Hood guys. And uh, Love is shot in the shoulder, but is still able to gunfight, wrangle a horse, and shoot all of them. All. Like, you were literally just shot in the shoulder. <laughs> yeah. And I don't think bullets were as good as they are now. So I think they would like warp and do other things in the yeah. body, which could blow they'd, like, up. A they'd horn. explode in your shoulder. Like, you'd shred it to pieces. But yep. um, then there's like a scene where. 
Idris Elba blows that one guy up to smithereens and like they cut immediately to outside and there's no reaction to a literal bomb going off inside his house. <laughs> Dude, they were so like nonchalant yeah. about it outside. Like, I was like, oh, are they not going to say, what was what was that? Yeah. I wonder. I know there was like, then, no destruction think- of the house that they showed. It was just like, oh, that just kind of happened and we don't really, we have no reaction to it. <laughs> Which I thought was funny. No, and then I think Idris was like, he was literally looking out of the window at some point. And I was like, nobody just thought to maybe shoot this guy, like, while he's inside. Mm-hmm. Like, what is, what I is know, going like, on? I know, like, the guy with the sniper, like, did he want it that personal? Like, he could have just sniped him. Yep. He was we literally made just, that a quick movie. Could have been quick. Could have been done. Over and done with. And then, you know... You have the whole scene where he reveals that he's his half brother, and then he implies or indicates that the entire reason that they left him alive was to make him a, an outlaw to seek revenge on who exactly? Because they're dead. It would have been like, it just didn't really make sense. And kind of been harping on it the whole time is that we don't really know if Love was even an outlaw to begin with. So um, it didn't really seem like that based on his character. He just seemed like he was hell bent on revenge against the Crimson Hood, almost like a vigilante more than anything. Bounty Hunter was definitely like an active thing during the Western times, or at least during the, in the mythos of Western cinema, uh, bounty hunters are a thing. Um, Good use of the word mythos there. (laughs) Yeah, I did. (laughs) You know, tweet out like uh, the first word, like there's a Twitter account that tweets out the first time the New York times uses like a word. And uh, (laughs) it's a funny account to follow, but um uh could do that for our podcast every time oh yeah true <laughs> you go people mythos mythos um but yeah and then the movie kind of just ends with him killing idris elba he doesn't really have time to kind of recollect his thoughts on the fact that he was just learned that idris elba is his half brother he just kills him in the next 20 seconds would have been much better if this was revealed earlier on just saying and then they all just kind of ride off into the distance, and we just see a quick shot of Regina King's character still alive looking at them. And that's where the movie ends. Now you're thinking, wow, he summed this movie up in about 47 minutes, which is pretty good. But I just want to point out that this movie is two hours and 15 minutes long. <laughs> and we summed that movie up in about 40 minutes. It took us an hour, over an hour, to do the French Dispatch, which is 90 minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my god! Just to yep. kind of highlight the <laughs> bad pacing issues in this movie. There's just so much nothing that happens at certain points. I was... And it's like... Once again, it's, I don't even know. Like, they could have devoted it to maybe a little more mm-hmm. character development. Yeah. Because, I mean, I thought they were like... Good, great characters, very memorable. But I feel like if you had done that a little bit more, you would have pulled through some of the plot points. I think a little bit. Yeah, I agree. I think definitely the characters are memorable, but you could have developed. I feel like the main character was the least developed. Is that am I the only mm. one who feels that way? Like I feel like Nat Love's character was the least developed. The only time we were really seeing him, he kind of is one dimensional throughout the entire movie. He's hell bent on revenge. And the only time where he's challenged is that he has to rob a bank. But, like, it, it it's so, so over and done with so quickly that it's, like, hardly could be worth calling, like, a development moment or a period of change for his character. Because he's just like, I just got to do it. They got fields. They got fields. I got to do it. And then they do it. And it's a five-minute scene. And they're over. He doesn't even kill anyone. He just gets out of there there's a couple of u.s marshals that i think shoot at them as they're trying to leave and that's kind of it that is the scene it doesn't really develop his character in any way and it almost just felt like filler to drag the plot on a little bit longer um and or they just wanted to have a bank robbing scene in western i don't know (laughs) it's just like gotta hit all the hit all the fun spots but (laughs) i get a bank robbery scene good yeah and then they find then he finds out that like his his half brother is the one he's been trying to kill all these years and it he just does kill him anyway, but because he learns twenty seconds before he kills, him. dude, dude, I literally almost said I hope he doesn't do it at that point yeah. in time. Please, just could have done a do something. This thing, I don't know. Like, yep, it's just. And then who knows? Because then you could have had Idris in a second one, mm-hmm. 
and they could have been cool. Yeah, because they wouldn't be clearly allies. with that ending trying to set up like a potential sequel. Yep. Um, oh, and I did. I guess there was a grave that was marked Nat Love at the end to kind of signify that he's Nat Buck or something. I was wondering if he was going to go Nat Buck or if like the life he had basically been leading up to that point was done now and he was doing his own thing. It could have been that. Because, I mean, when you live a life of revenge, after you take that revenge, there's nothing left to live for. You know? Mm-hmm. You dig to... Well, you you do, a new you, purpose. Yeah, you dig too great. Like, I'm surprised this story was like... I mean, yeah, it's a classic revenge plot, but like there's so many of those. And sometimes those plots have like a deeper meaning to them. Like it'd always be like revenge bad, which is also another classic cliche trope. But like, um, I'm surprised that they didn't really like reflect on that even a little bit. It was just like, Oh, it's a revenge. And then he kills his half brother. The moment that he learns that he has a half brother. Oh, we're related. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we are. No, no, <laughs> No. 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 <laughs> yeah, like a little uh, just like, like Luke like, Skywalker yeah. freaking yeah. out into a. <laughs> From my point of view, the Jedi are evil. <laughs> oh, okay, Anakin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, no, that was a. Um, that was an ending. That was an ending. That was an ending. That was, but yeah, the movie had bad pacing issues for sure. Um, and, and like, honestly i think that's it's only like one of its only like, pacing and then just because of the pacing i think that just kind of threw off some of the other elements. yeah i think so and like they could have done like the the funny thing is that they had if they had like they had a two-hour runtime and they could have come they could have really packed that in with a lot of character development and like backstory for our characters but they chose not to and it dragged on a lot like it, this plot this movie could have been 90 minutes <laughs> like it's it, it is it is kind of a quick story it just there's a lot of stuff that just doesn't necessarily matter i guess uh at the end of the day and which is a shame because they have good moments there's points that they lead to that are great moments but it just doesn't have the um the infrastructure the building blocks that to support it infrastructure you were killing it with the diction today i don't know what's going on man i don't know i think i read too many (laughs) i think i read too many news articles today (laughs) (laughs) that's fair that's fair it's a buzz term these days but no i i do the pacing that was and then it's just they could it could have even i would have been cool with flashbacks like if we just flashback talk about something and then flashback Mm -hmm. and then shows okay so we can establish to how we got to this point and what happened in the past i don't i don't even care about even i even i don't even like necessarily like a flashback as a story device i think you could have worked in this movie just a little bit give us like a little bit more backstory to nate or at least give us a montage, like a quick 30-minute, 20-minute montage of him growing up from his 10-year-old self to his what he is today. Like, And I also think they could have probably held off of killing Cortez to later in the movie to kind of give progression in the story of him getting this revenge. Because they kind of just do it all at the end. Like the whole yep. movie is leading up from the freaking beginning to the end of the movie. <laughs> and it's the, this entire build up to that. And for those of you who don't know, Cortez is the dude with the scorpion yes. on his hand from the beginning mm. of the, the flick. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. But, you know, I even like us. Uh, so I was thinking like more of uh, the the Tarantino fly, like case in point, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, when they flash back to um, Cliff's, uh, I guess, his like wife. Yeah. And then when she's like yelling at him and he's on a boat and he has a harpoon. And they only just do that like, for like a minute and then it goes away. Uh-huh. They could have done that. Yeah, just, yeah. Like, that, just that's, uh, that's like a fine use of the flashback device. But I think using... Like that story device for like longer periods of like five to ten minutes can yeah. be a little, mm. but like yeah, yeah, we don't need to rehash, need to rehash that. But like the, yeah, the, in the case notes. of Once Upon a Time, where it's a quick like twenty second clip, and it's kind of funny in a way, but like it's meant to be more <laughs> of like a comical like device, and like to be like yeah, this is kind of an insight of his character. I think that's when it works the best. But that's me. Absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. Oh man, yeah, dude, that. uh you hit on all the points that I was literally going to talk. Did you have a favorite character? I'm just Oh, Lakeith curious. Stanfield is my favorite character. He's okay. Cherokee Boom. Cherokee Boom. When he takes out the knife and just starts cutting the dude yeah. inside of his legs, I was like, oh, Damn. this is like, bad, I don't man. like violence. And I'm like, oh, yes, you do. <laughs> oh, that was a lie. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, no, no, no. 
<laughs> um, how does this rank among, I guess, some of your top westerns? I don't even know how many westerns I've seen to really mm. like give you a good uh, portrayal. I was never big on western films growing up. Uh, it's not that I don't like them. It just felt like it was outdated because there was a time in Hollywood where all they made were westerns. Like think back to Clint Eastwood, and, like just all westerns. But I don't know. Uh, it's uh, it's an average western movie to me. Like. I think my favorite Western would still be Django. Uh, I don't think that's going to change. Oh. Uh, okay, it's a good one. And I don't even know what the other Western movies are, really. But True Grit, I guess, would be. Uh, I guess that was. I guess, like, No a Country for Old Men is a Western. Is it? I mean, it takes place in Texas. I don't know. It's not really. Do you think that's that, like um, what you might call it? Western movie. There will be blood. Is it be considered a western? I guess, yeah, that would definitely might be my it's favorite western. Actually, it was, it's a great uh, that movie is definitely my favorite movie of uh, the two thousands. Really, country, or, uh, that was an there incredible. Will be blood. Yeah, I mean that's just. I mean, I mean that movie is just carried. Anything. I mean it's carried by a lot of really great performances, but um, Daniel Day Lewis. Daniel Day Lewis. Yeah, sorry, I couldn't. His name was blank. You were good. Daniel Day Lewis <laughs> was just so evil in that movie it it was harrowing it was amazing to watch it was just unbelievable to watch in that movie dude maybe we should just do a podcast on that i don't care that it's been out i would i haven't seen that movie in a while i would totally watch for a podcast episode it'd be great okay rehash that one um definitely but yeah so what were your you know who's your favorite character and uh I will say it was probably Cuffy. I, I loved her heart mm. out there. And it's funny because she had this, I guess, a childlike sense of wonderment. She had, like, the big eyes. Mm-hmm. And she uh, everything kind of seemed new. And everybody kind of doubted her. But she always came through in the end. And uh, she took a number of bells for the team mm-hmm. just to help get the dub at the, at the end. So I had to respect that. Yeah. Where would yeah. you rank this in your favorite Westerns? Okay. Okay. So my favorite western of all time is Tombstone. I don't think I've seen I that. I would probably put this dude. Okay, we gotta do. We gotta do a podcast. That. <laughs> That's a great flick. <laughs> but I'd probably put this in the in the middle. In the middle. In the middle. It was okay. entertaining. If you want to watch. Also, if you're not watching it with maybe like a film connoisseur. Yeah. Then it'd be like. like if oh, you just okay, want to have a good like time and don't necessarily yeah. care about a good plot or like a well concrete plot, like. It's a good time. It's a good time movie. It's a fun movie. You know, a Definitely. guilty pleasure movie for sure. <laughs> it's like, oh, what, you want to watch? The Harley Fall? Yeah, let's do it. Let's get some popcorn. I, I, I think it's worth the watch. I mean, it's fun. Um, I agree. It can drag a little bit, but it has it pays off in some really fun action sequences. And so, I recommend, you know. Any great performance? Oh, great yeah, performances. great performances all around. Like, can't go wrong. If you like westerns, then I would watch it. Absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. Oh man, any other thoughts there, Bud? No, I think uh, I think we hit on everything that I've, uh, you know I wanted to talk about. What about you, Palmer? No, same. We uh we got that one going. Excellent. Well, thanks so much for listening, everyone. That has been the What You Got podcast. I'm your host, Charlie Bud. Joined with me, as always, is the wonderful Jordan Palmer. Uh, you can listen to us on, you know, whatever podcast at every Monday. Sorry, we're late again. And we're honestly, guys, I'm going to just tell you right now. We're not having an episode next week. Thanksgiving weekend. It's a little busy. It's going to be tough. So stay tuned to Sorry, catch y'all. us in two weeks. And um, be sure to follow us wherever you listen. We're on YouTube now. So go subscribe to our YouTube channel. This episode, the YouTube episodes will usually come out like a day later than the podcast episode. So just takes so much longer, guys. All right. I'm sorry. Um, it takes like literally two hours to get a video up. <laughs> it takes time. Um, so, and then make sure you follow us on social media. Palmer, why don't you hit him with that social media? All right. You can follow us on Instagram at what you got podcast, what you spelled W H A T C H A, or on Twitter at what you got cast, what you spelled the same way. And until next time, peace out.